Welcome to Aurora HDR 2019, simply the most powerful and fastest HDR photo editing program in the world for Mac and PC. Aurora HDR helps photographers of all skill levels make amazing high dynamic range photos with only a few mouse clicks. Aurora HDR contains every imaginable tool needed to produce high quality HDR images, as well as one click looks to fix and stylize your images. HDR Smart Structure for realistic and artifact-free structure enhancement. Support for layers, allowing you to perform both global and local adjustments on your images. LUT support with 11 integrated LUTs and native RAW support. In this quick start video, I'm going to show you how to import a series of bracketed images, merge them into a single 32-bit image, using our new Quantum HDR engine to process and stylize the photo, and export a finished image that you can easily share with friends and clients. When you launch Aurora HDR 2019, you'll be greeted by this splash screen. Click on the Open button and navigate to a set of bracketed images you want to work on. We'll be working with five bracketed images of Mount Fuji in Japan. I'm going to select the five images and click Open. Aurora HDR will show you previews of each of the images as well as their exposure values, which indicate how many stops under or overexposed each of the brackets are. Before you create your HDR image, you'll want to make some decisions. The first thing you may want to do is check the auto alignment box. Now, this is critical if you're shooting handheld, but even if you're shooting with a tripod, sometimes pressing the shutter or even a gust of wind can move the camera just enough so that your images don't align. So this is a good box to check in either situation. The next thing you want to do is you want to click the settings icon, which looks like a small gear, and this gives you a few more choices. The first one is ghost reduction. And ghost reduction is really useful for movement within the frame, whereas auto alignment is if you moved your camera, Ghost reduction is really useful if you have things such as cars moving, or people walking, or in this case, maybe the leaves and the branches of these trees are moving between each of the different exposures. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on ghost reduction. And I have a couple of choices. I can choose which one of my five bracketed frames will be my reference frame, or the one that they're going to use as the primary image, and then erase the ghosting from the other ones. Your next choice is whether or not to check the chromatic aberration reduction. And if you have a lens that gives you that purple or green fringing along the edges of subjects, vertical edges of buildings, this is really useful because it will help correct anomalies from your lens. Now, I don't have that as an issue here, so I'm not going to check it. And as a side note, you shouldn't just check everything. I mean, it can fix a lot of the issues. But if you don't need to fix it, all you're doing is you're forcing the application to do more calculations that are unnecessary, and it will take a little bit longer for your images to be merged together. Next, I'll click on the Create HDR button, and Aurora HDR will tone map each of the individual images and then merge those tone mapped images into a single high dynamic range image ready for me to work with. Now let's take a quick overview of the interface. In addition to your image, there are three basic areas to the Aurora interface. Along the top is the toolbar. Here you'll find general all-purpose and frequently used functions of the software. We'll explore some of these along the way as we edit. The side panel, located on the right of the main image, is where you'll find the individual filters to fine-tune your photo. And along the bottom of the interface is the Aurora HDR Looks panel. With a single click, you can apply multiple filters and adjustments to an image. Aurora HDR looks can be used to fix problems in an image or give you a stylistic look. Looks are broken down into collections. And if you click on the collections menu pop-up, this will display a variety of Aurora HDR look packs that have been created by the Skylum team and top HDR photographers. Select the Essentials look category. This pack contains 12 different versatile built-in Aurora HDR looks suitable for all kinds of images. You'll notice that each Aurora HDR look provides a real-time preview. 
select the first Aurora HDR look, Natural. Aurora HDR instantly applies a predefined set of filters as well as the settings used for each of these filters. With just one click, we're able to recover some of the highlights, give a subtle boost to the colors, and brighten up the foreground. To adjust the effect of the look applied to the image, simply click and drag the amount slider to the left to reduce the effect. By default, all Aurora HDR looks are set to the maximum of 100%. Now I'm going to select the vivid Aurora HDR look. Check out the side panel and you'll see that all of the filters from the natural Aurora HDR look are reset and replaced by the filters and adjustments from the Vivid HDR look. Vivid punches up the saturation and vibrance of the image, adds some radiance, and a vignette. You can use your right or left arrow keys to move through the different Aurora HDR looks. Notice as I step through each of the looks that the filters on the right update with each of my selections. Now, while I'm editing, I often find it's valuable to compare my original image against my developed image. At the top of the interface are the Quick Preview and Compare buttons. Pressing the Quick Preview button toggles between the original middle exposure image and the current state of your image. Next to the Quick Preview button is the Compare button. This button toggles a split screen mode. The before image is displayed on the left, and the current after image is displayed on the right. The vertical strip can be dragged left and right as needed to compare the before and after images. Let's go ahead and toggle that back off. So as you can see, it's really easy to get some great results with simply one click. But let's go ahead and refine one of our looks with the filter adjustments on the right side of the interface. Now I want you to notice that in the right filters panel, the text on some of the filters have changed from white to orange. Orange indicates that a filter has been modified. Now clicking on that filter will reveal all of the individual adjustments for that filter. I'm gonna begin by selecting HDR Basic. This selection has many of the developed filters that you can use for color, exposure, and bringing out the details in the highlights and the shadows. Now, since we already selected an Aurora HDR look, some of the filters have already been adjusted. For instance, the highlight slider has been moved slightly to the left, recovering details in the brightest areas of my photo. Now, the sky is properly exposed, but the building in the foreground is a little bit dark. So we could use the shadow sliders to brighten up the building, but the smart tone adjustment gives us a more natural result. Smart Tone is one of the many unique features in Aurora HDR 2019. Moving it to the right will open up the shadowed areas without affecting the highlights. Moving the slider to the left can recover highlights without crushing and losing details in the darker areas of the image. I'm going to move it a little bit to the right just to open up the shadows so we can really see the building a little bit better. The LUT mapping filter is one of those hidden gems that can dramatically enhance and stylize your image. The Deep Aurora HDR look has already modified this filter, adding the Dark Moody LUT at 35%. I'm going to reset the amount slider to 100 by double clicking on the white dot. Now I want to show you that Aurora comes with a bunch of LUTs already in the program. All I need to do is just hover my cursor over the different LUTs to see how they affect my image. So for instance, if I like the way Spartan looks, I can simply click on that. It will apply the LUT to my image, and then if I wanted to, I could either enhance it by increasing its effect on my image, or dial it back by moving the amount slider to the left and blend this look back with my original image. Now, even though I really like the way this look, I'm gonna step back to that original dark, moody 35% LUT. And all I have to do is go up to the center of the interface where I'll find two buttons. The one on the left allows me to step back or undo everything I've done one step at a time. I can do this with a keyboard shortcut of Command Z or Command Z on a Mac or Control Z or Control Z on a PC. To the right of the undo button 
is another button which opens up the History drop-down panel. Now what's really cool about the History drop-down panel, it, it remembers every single filter that I've adjusted and even every slider that I've moved. So I can go back to any point in time all the way to when I originally opened my image. Now, I just want to go back to the Aurora HDR Deep Look. So I'm going to simply go to that point in time and click on Deep Activated. But in reality, I did do a little bit of modification with my Smart Turning slider. So even though I've selected this Deep Activated, I can still go forward to the Dynamic Brightness Smart Tone slider adjustment. And there we now have our building in the foreground a little bit brighter. Now Aurora HDR 2019 offers a special type of layer, an adjustment layer that makes it easy to add another set of filters or another Aurora HDR look to an existing edit. By using a mask with the adjustment layer, I can control precisely what parts of my image are affected by this layer. Now to create a new adjustment layer, I'm going to simply click on the small plus sign to the right of the word layers in the side panel. Under the drop down menu, I'm going to choose add new adjustment layer. And now I'm ready to further enhance my image. I'm going to go ahead and open up my collection pop up and choose dramatic looks for my collections to work with. And from this collection, I'm going to choose a look called creative drama. Now I really like what it has done to the building and to the base of Mount Fuji, but not to the sky. So I'm gonna use the masking tool to selectively paint in the areas of my image that I wanna be affected by the Creative Drama Aurora HDR look. To do this, I'm gonna click the Edit Mask icon located on the right side of the adjustment layer. It looks like a small paintbrush. A drop-down menu will appear and I'm gonna select Brush. The mask icon turns orange, and the cursor turns into a paintbrush, and a new toolbar appears. By default, the brush starts off in the paint mode. This is reflected by a small plus sign in the center of my brush. I'm going to brush over the building and the trees in the foreground, and the base of Mount Fuji in the background. The Creative Drama Aurora HDR look is now only applied to those areas of my image. Now if I click on the show mask icon, the small eyeball located on the left side of the toolbar, this turns on the red mask overlay. The red overlay shows what areas of the adjustment layer are affecting the image. Now I can see that I've missed a couple of spots and I've also painted over some areas of the sky that I didn't want to. And all I have to do is hit the erase button and now I can trim that mask so it is only being applied exactly where I want it on my image. Let me go ahead and turn off the overlay mask. And I want to show you the before and after of what I've done with just this adjustment layer. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the blue done button on the right side of the toolbar to get out of the masking mode. On the right side of this adjustment layer is a small eyeball. And I can use this to deactivate and reactivate just this layer. So by clicking on the eyeball, I can turn off the effect that I just applied. So I can see exactly how the creative drama look has affected the lower part of my image. Let me go ahead and turn that back on. Now, directly out of the camera, your digital photos will likely not be sized to the exact dimensions you need. Between different shaped screens, web pages, social networks, and prints, it's often common to need to change the shape and size of an image. In the upper right area of the toolbar is the crop icon. Clicking it, or simply pressing the C key on your keyboard, activates the crop tool. Now by default, the crop will try to keep the original aspect ratio of your image. But if you go to the left side of the interface, you can click where it says original, and you can choose from a variety of preset aspect ratios. I'm going to go ahead and choose the one to one square aspect ratio. And now if I want to position this, I can simply move the image under the crop. And if I need to make the crop bigger or smaller, I can simply grab the edge and reduce it or enlarge it as needed.
once I get the image positioned and cropped just how I like it, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Done button on the far right side of the interface. While you're working on an image, you can save your progress as a native Aurora HDR file. The best thing about a native Aurora HDR file is that when you reopen them, not only can you pick up exactly where you left off, but Aurora has also saved a history of every edit you've made, every look you've applied, every slider adjustment made since you started working on your image. To save your work in progress, press Command S or Control S on your keyboard, or you can choose File Save. In the pop-up dialog box, choose where you want to save your project. If you're on a Mac, there are a few checkboxes presented when you save your document. The first two are checked by default, and you should leave them checked. Save Original Resources saves all of your source files inside the Aurora project file. So if you move the project file, you will still have all of your original image files. Save History ensures that when you reopen a project file, the History drop-down panel remembers all of your edits. Windows Compatible saves the file in a format that will be recognized by the Windows operating system. This is extremely useful if you'll be handing files back and forth between Macs and PCs. Now when saving on a PC, there are no checkbox options. Aurora HDR 2019 automatically saves the original media and the history inside the project file. The file can be opened up on both a Mac and a PC. Click the Save button to write your file to disk. To save your files as a picture that you can post or send to somebody, go to the menu and choose File Export. Choose where you want to save your file, and now you can select what format you want to save your file in, such as JPEG, TIFF, or several other popular formats. Depending on the format, you'll have additional options to choose from, such as size, color, depth, and compression, to name a few. This has been a really quick walkthrough of Aurora HDR 2019. But as you can see, it's able to bring out the best in your images and it helps you create the perfect photograph you envisioned when you snapped the shutter. Aurora HDR 2019. Great photography differently.